Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. So f is a differentiable function and we have 2 f of x equals f of xy plus f of x over y. Now f is defined on the positive real numbers. Let me also say that. It's not defined for numbers that are not positive, in other words. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to solve this. I'll be presenting two methods, but one of them will be kind of, you'll see. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, since f is differentiable, I can use derivatives. Let's go ahead and differentiate both sides. But here's one thing to be careful about. Since x and y are free variables, I can basically differentiate with respect to whatever we, I want. And in this case, I'm going to differentiate with respect to, I hope you don't mind, WRT means with respect to y. And you might be like, why is he doing that? Because it's going to help. Now, first of all, if you differentiate with respect to x, what happens? You can definitely try it out. But on the left-hand side, it's going to give you two times the derivative of f. But if you differentiate with respect to y, which means x will be considered a constant, okay? f of x will also be a constant because it doesn't contain y, and its derivative will be 0. So this is better from that perspective. If you differentiate 2 times f of x, that's a constant. Its derivative is going to be 0. Make sense? Now here we have to be careful. How do you differentiate this with respect to y? So it's kind of like differentiating f of 2y or f of 3y because x is a constant, remember? Like ky. To differentiate it first, we're going to differentiate the outside and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. But the derivative of like 3y, think about it, isn't that 3? So the derivative of xy is just going to be x. Make sense? So when you think of a simpler example, it's actually easier. Plus... The derivative of f pra, f over f of x over y. Now, since you're differentiating with respect to y, that means y is in the denominator and you're dividing a constant by y. So it's kind of like 1 over y or 3 over y. So when you differentiate something like this, again, it's going to be f prime at x over y. This is the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of 1 over y. The derivative of 1 over y is negative 1 over y squared, right? And in this case, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. But it's just going to be negative x over y squared. It's the opposite of the constant divided by y squared. Make sense? If you don't like this shortcut, feel free to write x over y as x times y to the power negative 1. Remember, x is a constant, so you can leave it alone and just differentiate y to the power negative 1, which is negative 1 over y squared. Get it? Same idea. Now, we have a negative term here and uh, a positive term, and there's some zero. So let's go ahead and put the negative term on the other side, whatever that side is, right? So let's go ahead and see which one is going to be a little helpful for us. I could probably do this. Uh, leave this alone. So like x times f prime xy equals f prime x over y times x over y squared. Awesome. So this is my equation. And now I'm going to replace y with x, okay? Because that's going to simplify it even further. And we can always do that with functional equations pretty much all the time. Let's replace it. That's going to give us x times f prime of x squared equals f prime of x over x, which is 1, times x over y squared, which is x over x squared. But x over x squared, by the way, these x's cancel out, leaving us with 1. And then if I multiply both sides by x squared, I kind of get something interesting. But let's go ahead and leave it like this. I want to leave f prime x squared as f prime of 1 over x squared. And now f prime of 1 is a constant because you differentiate f and then replace x with 1 which gives you a constant. Let's replace it with c. So we are function, the derivative becomes c over x squared. But wait a minute, this is x squared. Now, here's one thing I can do. I can multiply both sides by 2x, which is the derivative of x squared, but I don't need to, or x by actually, not 
cubed, x squared, probably by x cubed, because the derivative of x cubed from chain rule is going to give you 3x squared, but I do need maybe this to get x squared, but there's an easier way to do it. And that's called, starts with S. Did you get it? It's called substitution. Yes. So let's rewrite this so you can see better what I'm talking about. So this is my equation. And can I replace x squared with something like t? How about that? Replace x squared with t. You get f prime at t is c over t. This is awesome because all I have to do is integrate both sides with respect to t. And I'm going to get f. Make sense? So from here, f of t, if you integrate 1 over t, you're going to get ln. So let's write it as c times ln t. And of course, at the end, I have to add my constant. If you differentiate this, you get c over t. Make sense? You can always check. That's what's cool about integration and differentiation. You can go back and forth. Obviously, integrating is not an easy task. It's kind of like reverse engineering. But I can go ahead and replace t with x to write my function in terms of x. Don't worry, that's not the same x. Okay? Now, we got our answer, and this is the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at another approach. Now, with the second method, first of all, my question is, is there a second method? Can we do it differently? Let's give it a try. All right. So, we have 2 f of x equals f of xy plus f of xy. Remember, I told you x and y have to be positive real numbers. So I'm not allowed to use 0. Be careful. Obviously, y can't be 0. And if I replace y with x, x can't be 0. Anyways, but I can use any positive number, right? So let's try y equals 1. If I replace y with 1 everywhere, I get 2 f of x equals f of x times 1, which is f of x, plus f of x over 1, which is f of x. Uh-oh. It's kind of like stating the obvious, right? 2f of x is always f of x plus f of x. Is there a case where this doesn't work? I don't think so. Anyways, this didn't give me much. Let's try x equals 1. That gives me 2f of 1 equals f of y plus f of 1 over y. Hmm, this is kind of interesting because this is a constant. And if f of y plus f of 1 over y is a constant, I mean, normally these are functions in terms of y. So their sum should not be a constant, right? Let's call this m as a constant. But why is that a constant? Because something cancels out. Maybe f of 1 over y is the opposite of f of y, so that their sum is 0, or they, their sum is a constant, whatever. It may not be 0. But this kind of reminds me ln function or log function. Why? Because ln 1 over y is ln y to the power negative 1, which is negative ln y. See that? If f of y is defined as ln y, this actually satisfies my equation. In other words, and by the way, you could also do this, replace y with 1 over x. That's going to give you 2 times f of x equals f of 1 plus f of x squared. This also gives me the same idea. Look at that. f takes x squared and then bring the 2 to the front. You see that? That should remind you the log function or ln. So you can test it out. Yes, ln x works. Ln x plus a constant works. Ln x times a constant works. Ln x times a constant plus another constant also works. But how do you prove in that case there are no other solutions? That's a good question. But this brings us, and let me write the solution, f of x equals c ln x plus k again wins. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.